We begin tonight with Gilbert Police speaking out on a teen violence problem after the community raised concerns about the death of 16-year-old Preston Lord and other recent assaults in that area. Tonight, police are asking for the public's help in identifying a pack of teens, they say, involved in a robbery near Williamsfield Road and Market Street. Fox 10's Lindsay Regas joins us live in that area tonight with more. Lindsay. John and Christina, we are learning more about what happened on August 18th. Gilbert police releasing photos of those believed to be involved in the robbery. Over the past year, there has been an increase of assault incidents involving teens near Williams Field Road and Market Street, according to Gilbert Police. It's honestly kind of crazy because we live in Gilbert, which is pretty known to be safe. Um, I don't know why a bunch of kids are just out here like deciding. <laughs> Black folk gonna love this, huh, Marcy? <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't lying. They do it too. Look at them, man. B black people gonna be calling for these kids to get fucking the most time sentenced to the fullest extent of the law. Black people funny as shit. They gonna be online um, on their little um, pages and shit once they find out about this. Pleading and lobbying for these kids to get as much time as possible and they gonna blow it up and talk about it and shit, make it seem like this is it's equal to what's going on in their communities. It's kind of crazy because we live in Gilbert, which is pretty known to be safe. Um, I don't know why a bunch of kids are just out here, like, deciding to go crazy when, I mean, like, you just got to let people live. Like, you can't just think it's fun to go out and just fight a random dude. Low resolution photos show a group of people involved in what appears to be a fight on August 18th. While police have not officially linked this incident to the so called Gilbert Goons group, they did mention on their teen violence investigations webpage that they are actively reviewing assault cases involving youth to see if there is any additional information or correlation between incidents in both Gilbert and neighboring communities. I just hear that it's a bunch of kids just like running around. They come to this in and out here. They run around and just do a bunch of things they're not supposed to be doing, obviously. Um, heard about the jump, obviously, and how they're just hurting a bunch of kids that are smaller than them. Earlier this month, Gilbert Police Chief Michael Solberg wrote in a statement they were made aware of the Gilbert Goons Group. Police initially said they did not have cases where the victims or suspects refer to the group. But today, police said recent updates from victims have referred to their alleged assailants as being associated with the group. It's just not fair to families out here. And yeah, for those kids, like, they just need to learn a lesson. In a letter to parents, Gilbert Public Schools asks parents to take time to talk with their children about the importance of their safety and being aware of the popular hangouts in the community. Gilbert police say they are going to increase patrol in high traffic areas. Now we reached out to Gilbert police and Queen Creek police, but both declined interviews tonight. Reporting live, Lindsay Regis Fox. Yeah, it was a sun in there. There was definitely a sun in a sun in there in the mix. This one right here. He could be on Brito, but we don't know. We like two sun bid. That's the sun. You think that's the sun? I, I know so. this is the sun. <laughs> Gotta have the shirt off. Yeah. Crazy, man. Um, it's more, man. It's more. Don't worry about it. It's more. Um, we had major, major news in the Gilbert Goons case and investigation, and it did not come from police. It came once again from AZ Central, our newspaper in Phoenix. And so before I even go any further, the AZ Central has provided amazing, consistent investig investigatory journalism that has broken this whole case wide open. If it wasn't for the AZ Central, I wouldn't know about the case. The first time I read the article, the first time I made the video, which was off the cuff, I didn't even know all of the details of the Preston Lord case. I wasn't even following it that closely. It is because of AZ Central that we know what we know. Today, AZ Central posted what I believe is its ninth article about the Gilbert Goon situation, 
all in less than two weeks. And today they interviewed a mom who I think we can describe as a hero. I'm not gonna name this mom, but this mom shared her story with AZ Central. And what she shared is just absolutely horrifying and incredible. So what happened with this mom is that her daughter was dating one of the Gilbert goons. And she did everything she could to keep her daughter away from the Gilbert goons, but it wasn't working. And so she was watching her daughter spiral pretty quickly. And this mom made a brilliant move that we all need to remember um, should we ever find ourselves in this situation. What this mom did was she made fake social media accounts and she befriended the goons and she could see what her daughter was doing through social media. And through social media, she found that her daughter was involved with some very, very dangerous boys. It was much more dangerous than she thought it was going to be. And she found that these boys had guns, that they had drugs, that there was tons and tons of fighting, and that much of it were premeditated fights. She said that there were at least two premeditated hits, not hits like take you out with a gun, but we're going to go jump a guy intentionally. So what we, what we thought was random, now we know was not only random. There Look at how white people, they just deal with this stuff a little bit different, man. I mean, that mom, man, salute to that mom. That mom was in her daughter's business, right? Yeah, she, she's like the KGB. That's how you got to be, man. You got to be in your kid's business, man. You got to be in your kid's business, man. Shout out to that mom, man. There were intentional hits. And what this mom did was she contacted Gilbert police and she told Gilbert police about the goons and about these attacks. After this mom reported the attacks, nothing happened. The goons still were not stopped. And her daughter was at that fateful night, that Halloween party on October 28th, where Preston Lord was killed. Her daughter's former boyfriend participated in killing Preston Lord. He immediately told her about it that night at the party. That boy later posted about it on Snapchat. Of course. <laughs> this mom and her family and her daughter have been tormented by the goons who continue to drive by her house and threaten her and harass her other daughters. And these boys have still not been arrested. In my opinion. They must got a lot of sons in the Gilbert Goons. The, the, the Gilbert Goons. <laughs> the Gilbert Goons must got some sons with them, man. They ain't been arrested yet. Opinion, we have a little bit of a dangerous situation on our hands, in my opinion. We've got this Facebook group that I previously told you about, and it's growing very quickly. I'm watching the posts. There are some people who are threatening to take matters into their own hands. And what that does is it puts every single one of our teenagers at risk, those who are dangerous and those who are not, because nobody knows who's a threat. And, and right now, Gilbert does not have faith in its police department to protect it. And that's a dangerous thing. I am truly praying that we see Gilbert PD step up, take some leadership, make some statements acknowledging all of this stuff that has come out that would not have come out except for the AZ Central. Please go subscribe to their newspaper. They're doing excellent work that we should all be very, very grateful for. We should be very, very grateful for this mom. And I'm really hoping that we see Gilbert PD and Gilbert leadership, G Gilbert mayor, step up, make this community feel safe because right now we don't. Hey man, that white woman is a is a hero, man. The white woman who made that video, salute to her, man. Oh, why don't she Why don't she say that all teenagers will be, will be at risk? As if like say we can't we don't we won't know who the threats are. How about the ones who aren't coming behind women and jump and humping them? The ones the ones who aren't fighting and they, they, I mean clearly they're not threats. Well, that last video I showed, that wasn't the Gilbert Goons. The one I showed you before this? Yeah. 
that the the the, the, the where the man was humping the woman, that was that wasn't the Gilbert Duel. The Gilbert oh, Duel was the ones that was fighting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um but but, but, I mean, but what I mean to say is you can't you can identify them by but by the way they're acting. I clear that the ones who the ones who ain't a threat is gonna be there we doing something else. And they claim they're gonna claim that oh yeah. Gilbert is only Gilbert is only three point four percent black. You might, you might have to change you might, you might have to change the ratio, Hawk. <laughs> Gilbert has um Gilbert has um wow I listen man Gilbert is not a um is 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 not a sun city but there was a sun in that group man you saw the sun right yeah they want the shirt off at least that yeah. one the, the one I pointed out I, I couldn't tell from the back of his head but like I mean like he had a fro. But the, but the picture was blurry. But I you definitely saying, see one. saying it was it was two sons in the group. I think it was two. Like one one of the guys that looked real blurry like off to the the one who had his shirt off to his left. But uh, mm. but I couldn't tell. But it looked, I, don't know, I I assume it was a son because of the I guess was the way the pants and the sneakers blended together. <laughs> but I could be. But maybe I'm. But maybe I'm reaching right now. That's crazy, man. Um. But I like the way these white folk are addressing it. Now I will say this: it's the the problem is not as metastasized as it is in the black community. You know what I'm saying? You so far it seems like they just got this one group they got to deal with. You know, um, yeah. When she mentioned when she mentioned the car going by the house, if it was more if it was more sunny, they would have shot the car, uh, shut up the house, or shot the wrong yeah, house. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Without a doubt. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to ask some cereal. Cloud tonight with the latest on the investigation into teenage violence in Gilbert. Charges have been filed against a group of teens in the Halloween death of 16-year-old Preston Lord. There have been other attacks as well, but so far no arrests. Lead <laughs> leading to frustration from the community. Lauren Clark joins us live after speaking with a Valley attorney to break down some of these issues. Lauren. Well, Brian and Linda, family attorney Billy Tarasio's views on the or TikTok videos talking about this subject have raked in thousands of views. And she said she decided to weigh in not just as an attorney, but also a Gilbert resident and a mom. Reports of violence and vicious teen attacks have sent shockwaves across the East Valley community. It feels like these attacks have been happening for a long time and it feels like there's all this evidence why hasn't anybody stopped these kids where are the parents there's just a lot of anger and frustration especially says family attorney billy tarasio when videos and screenshots seemingly capture yeah look at the gilbert great <laughs> somebody said he said that's the gilbert great <laughs> They got a son, man, man. They got one. That he he got his shirt on. He looked like he he looked like he was he he he, he active. He out here with his shirt off, man. Don't let your babies grow up to be a son word. During crimes are plastered across social media. But she explains investigators might need more. What you see in screenshots might not be admissible. They might be fake. They might be tampered. So you have to get it from the source. And the source is social media platforms or cell phone data or cell phone tower data. And none of that happens quickly. Earlier this week, Queen Creek Police submitted a referral for charges against seven people in 16-year-old Preston Lord's death. The teen was beaten at a Halloween party. His death led to outrage and marches for justice as community members decry teen violence. Billy says the submission begins the process. That means the district attorney, the county attorney, looks at the charges and says, do we think we have enough evidence wow. to move forward and get a conviction? They protested the killing of a teen by another teens, by other teens, not the killing of a crackhead by a fucking law enforcement officer. Yo, we're different, man, right? Yeah, they got their priorities straight. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I don't even think it's priorities, man. I think it's 
the way they approach it just like it's before priorities priorities is like different it's it's kind of like their programming their their their, their hardware their their operating system is different you know what I'm saying? well what, what, I meant, what i meant to say is they know exactly who to protest for you know like they have they have they have greater they have greater discernment on who to protest who to, who to spend their energy and time protesting for they're not going to do it for some some low life yeah and these are gliders man you can tell these are it's gliders they don't breed those but it's mostly gliders because these are some big people man <laughs> these are huge motherfuckers man to outrage and marches for justice as community members decry <laughs> team violence Billy says the submission begins the process. That means the district attorney, the county attorney, looks at the charges and says, do we think we have enough evidence to move forward and get a conviction? If they do, then that goes to the grand jury. Police said the seven suspects include both adults and minors. For anybody who's over the age of 15. Damn, so this is two sons. You see it? A son here and a son here. Yeah. This town is 3.4% black. <laughs> These the Gilbert Goons is a goddamn. It's just as many black Gilbert Goons as white Gilbert Goons. <laughs> the fuck is going on, man? I was sold that this was some white group going around, but it's, it's a white town, so it's probably like that's probably what they. And it, it, there are some of them that are white, I, I guess. And that goes to the grand jury. Police said the seven suspects include both adults and minors. For anybody who's over the age of 15, if we're talking about murder, rape, um, battery, like significant crimes, you can be tried as an adult. And what about the parents? Parents are, in Arizona, civilly liable for their children's willful, malicious torts or crimes that cause damage. Oh, that's great. I that's love that. What's up? Yeah. I love that. I love that. But you can only do that in a state that's um, a red state. You can't really do that because it wasn't McCain the governor there for a long time. John McCain. Uh, John McCain. I think he was he was a senator from Arizona. Oh, he's senator. Yeah, yeah. And they had that sheriff Arapayo, right? Yeah. Joe Arapayo. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, the, yeah. The Chang gangs where they were they would wear pink underwear as the demoralized them. <laughs> Well, I, think, yeah. I think that was smart. That was very smart. Yeah, man. Salute to, um, yeah, Arizona. You, you In Arizona, it's like got a very small black population. Yeah, you can't do that in the city, in this in the state with a high, a high black population. Black people going to complain about that because they know, like, they already know their kids is going to do that shit. So it's going to be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, like, to do that in a black area is basically like, punishing taking is stealing from the parents you know what i'm saying <laughs> there'd be a lot of parents hemmed up crimes you can be tried as an adult and what about the parents parents are in arizona civilly liable for their children's willful malicious torts or crimes that cause damage <laughs> And police are still trying to learn more as they're investigating this uptick of violence uh, across teens in the East Valley. And they need your help. Give any information. There's a link where you can send in tips. We have that on our website, fox10phoenix.com. We also have a web article explaining everything we know about this situation. We begin tonight, though, here at 10 o'clock with new details in the death of an East Valley teen. The Queen Creek Police Department says it has submitted charges to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office in the death of 16-year-old Preston Lord. The teen was beaten at a Halloween party and died later. Police say the Attorney's Office is reviewing those charges against seven people. This comes as community members hold a memorial walk tonight for the victim. Fox 10's Lindsay Regis has more. This was a very emotional walk. Preston Lord's family was here and they spoke at the very No, it wasn't, man. You gliders don't know emotion, man. That wasn't no goddamn emotion in that walk. <laughs> that was a very subdued walk, man. Gladys, I guess y'all share y'all show emotion differently than sons, man. Um 
Salute to my man, Jim Sefton from across the pond, man. He says, if there was true justice, you'd have a million subs. Yeah, man, salute, man. Salute to you, Jim Sefton, man. You're probably right, man, but we all know what they're doing, man. It is what it is, man. It is what it is, man. We got the four. We got we got the subs. We got man, and uh, hit that like button, everybody. We need the subs that we got to hit the like button. <laughs> Tens Lindsay Regis has more. This was a very emotional walk. Preston Lord's family was here and they spoke at the very end. Their message is heartbreaking. The East Valley community is pushing police to investigate teen violence in the community, especially the death of 16 year old Preston Lord. We came out today to represent Preston. Um, his mom is actually a coworker of mine. We're all just, We're all just love our friends and we're here to support and bring awareness. Preston was beaten on October 28th and died from his injuries at Phoenix Children's Hospital two days later. I was the first one to get to the hospital. I checked in and I said, I'm Preston Lord's aunt and he was just brought in as a trauma. The girl's eyes immediately dropped, avoiding eye contact with me and said, please come with me. This is Queen Creek's first homicide investigation. The chief said those parents have actively refused participation in the investigation. Preston was a student at Combs High School in nearby Santan Valley. He was on student council and played several sports. Since he was on the student council. Damn. Since this attack, Gilbert police have reopened four criminal investigations, and Gilbert police now have a web page dedicated to investigating teen violence. We're just concerned about violence going on in our community. We're concerned about our young children being victimized, and we want... <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So now you got... Now you got... BLM BLM going to show up. This town is going to be these people are going to be um branded racist, man. Very soon, man. Um very soon these kids are going to be branded racist, man. Um how long do you think it'll be till lighters stop caring about being called racist? A long time cuz gliders gliders want to be that th that's their DNA. They want to be seen as, as doing the right thing, whatever the right thing at that time is. At different periods in, in, in history, the right thing is different. Is is different. In this era, the right thing as a glider is to be is to not see judge people by race, is to not be racist. And gliders are going naturally. Um, Try to meet that bar. I think they. I think they need. It's like it's like they need sons to tell them, "Hey, look, you're not you're not, you're not treating us the way we need to be treated. We need to treat us. We need to treat us harshly. Otherwise, you just we're just gonna keep running over you." <laughs> yeah, but you gotta be careful with that too, because if Gladys treat treat us harshly, man, we gonna be um. We're so complex, man. Like we got such a complex, we're such a complex problem for gliders, man. Um, really? I do. Yeah, because here's the thing, right? Like, say gliders treat sons harshly, right? Yeah. <clears throat> sons who live around other sons are gonna be like. Yo, living, being a son, or as being a son that got some sense, and living around other sons is fucking crazy. You might have to kill a son, man. You did what I'm saying. You might have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it, it's a very complex problem, but I do think they need to be harsher with the criminal justice system. I don't yeah. necessarily think Gladys individually need to be harsher on blacks. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think that they need the their institutions. They need to make their institutions harder on blacks. 
No, that's I mean, that's that's what I was, that's what I was saying. I I'm not, I wasn't saying that they that any individual gliders need to be harsh or you know, you know, uh, you know, very suspicious and how you know and, and being around like some people because I think like like I said when like how how can you say all teens are in, are in danger when clearly it's the ones who you can identify the ones who are who are who are, who are, act, who are acting up. So right. I don't think I don't think glide, at least from the experience I have with gliders they don't. Uh, if they see if they see within you aspects of like of, of, of basic qualities they qualities and cultures that they share, like like hard work for example, or honesty, mm-hmm. things like merit, things like that, they'll they'll they will they will reciprocate it. But the ones who but the ones who don't show it, they'll keep them close just to keep an eye on them. But they know but they know just how far to they just they know just how far to, to go with them, how much to trust them with. I think and, more, I, I think gliders are like that generally, whether you're that way or not. Look at every sun man who has a podcast, right? And I'm talking about every celebrity, every basketball player, or every rapper, right? Who's their co-host on their podcast? He's just a glider. Who's who's everybody's um, agent? Who's every black rapper? Black, I'm not talking about his label like the Diddy and the Chuck. I'm talking about his actual agent or his, you know what I'm saying, his manager and shit. Who is that? I think you need fishermen here to answer that. But uh, yeah, man. <laughs> but generally it's a generally it's a generally it's a glider. Who's their financial advisor or accountant? Who do they trust the, with their money? The juice crew. Yeah. Listen, man, let me tell you something, man. Let me just show you something, man. All right. You know how much LeBron hates white people, right? Yeah. Press one of you if you know how if you if you know how much LeBron hates white people, LeBron James. Press one of you if you if you understand. If you if you have just a, a a working knowledge of how much he detests white people, well, LeBron James, look who his publicist is, Adam Mendelson. Now you could say he's Juice Crew or whatever. I don't know, but looks like a fucking white guy to me. That's LeBron James' publicist. This is the person who crafts his public image, who his public statements. His publicist is this guy, Adam Mendelson. And LeBron despises white people. So it's like, yeah. I, I think that sons, sons, not on, not only are white people nice, but sons, sons feel more comfortable having the key roles in their life if they're successful. The key roles in their lives filled by gliders. Yeah, they also want to live by gliders. Exactly. Exactly. There was that. You remember there was that. Uh, there was that uh, Sun Man coach in the NFL where he was like claiming that. Um, I think he got let go by one of the football teams. Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah. racist and all that. Brian Flores. And then they. Brian Flores. Yeah, and then they they showed his uh, lo- uh the lawyer team, and they were all yeah. gliders, yeah. and he was talking about diversity. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um. I remember that. Um, I definitely remember that. Um, yeah, his whole team, his whole legal team that was suing the NFL for racism, the entire team, the entire team. I mean, every last one of them. So, uh, how does someone like LeBron become a puppet of this guy? Because if this He's is not a puppet, this is publicist. No, what I, what I mean to say is, if his publicist is telling him what to say. It's like almost like LeBron, like because LeBron says a lot of things that 
that can clearly it clearly is inconsistent with things that are going on around him. So like, but he can't. But like, he can't see that. So that's why I say he. As I say, that's why I say he might be seem like he's a puppet of his publicist. Mm, I think it's the other way know. around. Yeah, well, I mean, like I think, he's his puppet. You know, I'm yeah, saying, exactly. I'm saying that he's. I'm saying he's. He's. He knows enough about gliders or, or, as to what to say to get a get a reaction on him. I think I say he's more like a grifter, and he and he's using he's using LeBron as like a as a as a vehicle for as a vehicle for money. No, this guy's a. He's like a. He's like a, a, a very popular publicist. It's not like he's, like he's he, he's like a. You know, he's one of the biggest publicists out there. He just LeBron hired him because he's one of the best. But what I'm saying is, it just, that's a very important position in 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 a, somebody like LeBron's life. Like that's you're you're, you're LeBron. Your publicist. Your public. Your publicist is this fucking lily white guy. Well, like, well, if let's say, like, Ak, if he, would you ever consider getting a publicist? I, I, if I needed one, yeah, I would definitely. If I needed one, why would I would you, go for the best one. Yeah, but why would you think you need one? You need a publicist because you can't because because LeBron LeBron has a public image to protect. Like he has the crap. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he tweets off. He probably tweets off the cuff every when when he gets emotional and shit. But I mean, most of his um, public um, statements and his, the things you see coming out of LeBron's camp are definitely like, you know, combed over and, you know, what I'm saying sifted through with a fine tooth comb, you know, what I'm saying to make sure it's properly said and all this shit. Well, and well, then when he and when he encounters um, controversy or crises, you know, the, you need that too, you know. Well, I mean, what I mean to say is, I think I would say that you're, I would say that you have more intelligence than LeBron James. But would you think that you need a publicist? Let's say if you had, let's say if you had a greater public image. I mean, LeBron could be smarter than me. He could just be woke. Like for instance, LeBron's made a bunch better decisions in his life than I have. But he's just a woke. He's he's an idiot because he's woke. But as far as making decisions, LeBron's way smarter than me making decisions. Man, he's made. Way better decisions than I have in my life, man. Well, um, I mean, I'm not gonna take that away from him. I mean, I, I think it's, it's easy. To, it's easy to make this. It's easy to make the right decisions when you have less scruples. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, because if, if you, it's like if you could, you could take the easy route to get, you know, to get a, get a hundred million, or you can, you know, keep your balls and keep your integrity, and. Just set up for a hundred thousand, and like, what, like which, what, what, would be, what would be the preferred route? You know, if for for long term, I'd say I like to keep my balls, my integrity. The keep, the, the mm. keep, from ha- keep, to keep from have, keep from having someone to tell me what to say and what not to say, or to try to keep up an image that I know that's not that's that's not who that's not who I truly am. Mm. But I'm I think the only not, time he know. pulls, I think the only time he pulls the reins on LeBron. Because I mean, LeBron can pretty much say anything he wants to say uh, when it comes to gliders and stuff, and and the racist USA and all that. But then, the only time that publicist might pull the reins on him is like, hey, you need to not watch your mouth. Is when he probably says something about China or something because they don't yeah. want to lose that money. That's and that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's it's the it's like the the money has got him by the balls, and that's. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I understand money. Money is important, but it's not the it's not the end all be all for what you, for why you do, why you do something. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're playing basketball, money is the end all. Like, if you're a professional basketball player, it is. It is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Simeon, Simeon K. Preacher said, "Balls and integrity are right are right wing talking points." <laughs> yeah, he, he's a he's a he's a professional basketball player. Don't forget that. But, um, yeah. Gilbert, Gilbert Goons. council members addressing teen violence as police continue to investigate the Gilbert Goons. This comes as Gilbert PD reopens cases of assaults and other crimes involving teens in the town over the past two years. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joining us live in Gilbert tonight with the latest. Justin. And Mark, for months, residents have expressed deep concern over violent teen attacks, voicing complaints at town council meetings 
and on social media. Meanwhile, Gilbert's mayor and the council have denied our requests for on-camera interviews, citing active investigations. At next Tuesday's Gilbert Town Council meeting, Jim Torgerson, Chuck Bongiovanni, and Scott Anderson will ask fellow council members to vote on forming a subcommittee focused on team violence. Any movement in the forward direction to make sure we're looking at the data and responding and have directive outcomes is great. Don't look at the data, man. <laughs> the data is racist. <laughs> Katie McPherson is a mother, an advocate for victims in a series of violent incidents with teenagers across the East Valley. I think nationally we're seeing this kind of blitz curb stomping and it hasn't been here yet and now it's here and it has been here for at least two to three years we're finding. Gilbert PD still searching for suspects connected to an aggravated robbery last August at an in and out near Williamsfield Road and Market Street. Richard Keener is the father of the young victim who is now living overseas and traumatized. I raised him his whole life, so the fact that, you know, this even happened and he had to, to leave for his safety is, is unacceptable. Detectives are investigating potential Damn. connections to a... That kid had to leave the state? I don't know if he had to leave the state, man. It's, come on, man. You, got you know that picture... That picture that they keep posting of the Gilbert, Gilbert crew, whatever they're called. Goons, the goons. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see any gliders in there. They all look like umbritos and suns. <laughs> but I don't the see town any glider. Is a glider town? It's somebody, and, and that that's what's going on, like with social media. People are saying, "Oh, see, look, I think a couple of, I saw a couple of gliders in there, man." Um, salute to the freshman, man. He says. Did you hear that sons are now blaming their ride in Bayside Market, Miami, on ten foot aliens? I kid you not. Uh, we're gonna have to go to Miami next, man. Um, salute to LRLRS, man. Um, I raised him his whole life, so the fact that you know this even happened and he had to to leave for his safety is is unacceptable. Detectives are investigating potential connections to a group known as the Gilbert Goons reopening assault cases involving youth over the last two years. There's been a ton of tips and evidence presented, and um, we, we should hear something soon. In a statement on the subcommittee proposal, Mayor Bridget Peterson says in part, I like the public appreciate the transparency in which council subcommittees operate, the goal-oriented nature of their existence, and their ultimate objective of bringing forth a recommendation to the public body for action. We reached out to the three council members proposing the subcommittee. None wanted to interview on camera, but did tell Fox 10 the purpose of the discussion is for transparency, weeding out misinformation, and figuring out the scope of teen violence in the area. Jim Torgerson spoke with us briefly over the phone. The fact of the matter is, is a lot of the public's extremely concerned, and it needs to be addressed. And we've promised to be transparent and accountable. And so that's exactly what we're doing. It's great, you know, that they want to do this, but it's, in my opinion, just a little too late. And Gilbert's police chief has said that the department is working to share any relevant information with local law enforcement agencies in support, also in support of Queen Creek Police's investigation into the murder of 16-year-old Preston Lord. Remember. <laughs> I think the reason why that kid left the country is because he was into something. He was targeted. They're probably going to come after him again. So he was like, "Okay, you got to you got to go somewhere else." <laughs> Rumors of aliens invading Miami are going viral on social media. This is for real, folks. The conspiracy theory stems from a large police presence at Bayside Marketplace on New Year's Day. Take a good look at your screen. Are those aliens walking in front of Bayside Marketplace in downtown Miami? On That's crazy. <sighs> That's crazy. Please, you speechless, man. Line conspiracy theorists are saying that shadowy figure, not far from parked Miami police cars, appears to be an alien. Uh, I 
it's not a um it's not the lights the glare from the lights like the thousands of lights that are out here it couldn't be the glare from one of the, some light it's got to be an alien okay and none of these cops reported that <laughs> and no dash cam videos from all these cop cars no dash cam videos or anything no body cams nothing even the 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 the, the venues um cameras Nothing. The, all the teens, not, nobody pulled out their cell phone. Not, nothing. Figure not far from Park Miami police cars appears to be an alien. Uh, honestly, I think it looks pretty real to me. Uh, alien looked pretty chill. Yeah, I'd be friends with an alien. I think it'd be pretty cool. The viral video was allegedly taken during that massive police presence at Bayside on New Year's Day. Crowds of young people armed with sticks began fighting. Police say. <laughs> We ID on this crowd, y'all. A lot of skinny jeans, a lot of skinny jeans, lot of skinny jeans <laughs> and high tops. <laughs> is this is this the Gilbert Goons? <laughs> the, the, the Miami chapter, yeah. Yeah, the Miami, the Miami mob. <laughs> yeah, I bet you. I bet you they ain't gonna build no. Uh, they're not gonna create any a uh, teen violence subcommittee. They already got one. That should be dismantled quick. They've had one for fucking 60 years, man. It's called the goddamn Vice Squad, man. <laughs> gang, the gang task force. I thought, I, thought, I thought they were the goon squad. The felony apprehension unit. <laughs> the U.S. market. And fighting. Police say juveniles were also setting off fireworks that some believed was gunfire, resulting in chaos. There's a cr big crowd of people running out of Bayside and kind of um, grouping up outside. And then we hear more commotion, and now they're all just running through the streets, running between cars, almost getting hit by cars. It was like absolute chaos. Now, rumors are circulating on social media saying police weren't there to handle a group of rowdy teens, but rather eight to 10 feet tall shadow aliens. But the real question is, are they friendly? Are they after us? Are they gonna attack us? Are they gonna do world domination on us? Who knows, man? So the phrases so Miami Mall and aliens in Miami have been among the top 10 searches on Twitter's trending tab. And Google News even has several reports questioning the event. Miami police saying in part, there were no aliens, UFOs or ETs. No airports were closed. No power outages. The statement ended with a facepalm emoji. Now to read up on the story, and a lot of people are... Do uh, you believe in aliens, though? After all that yeah, stuff that's been coming out? Uh, you I'm a, I'm a flat earth. I don't believe in space, man. I don't believe this space exists. I believe we're just in a fucking, on a flat plane. We're in a puddle on a flat plane. And the moon and the sun. So, sun. so, so all those, uh, that congressional hearing that they had with those three panelists, the high level security guy that said that they have 12 UFOs in their. Um, yeah, that's all propaganda. That's all bullshit. They, they yeah. want to keep us away from Antarctica, man. You know, it's huh. land, this this land past Antarctica, the ice, the the ice ring, man. Um, check out my man okay. Witsit, man. Witsit, um, W H I T S I T. Witsit gets it. He's another. He's another. I, 